When I refer to shocks, I'm talking about for individuals in their personal and family lives, the sorts of shocks that can happen and what the impact is of these shocks. So let me give an example. If you are a family with uh, no assets or very few assets, very little put by the in terms of savings, and you have a shock event. The shock event could be um, your house could be damaged. You could have, for example, uh, a fridge or a motor car breaks and has to be repaired. Uh, you could have an illness. And what happens with these shocks is that they need to be funded. They need to be paid for. You need to replace the item or pay for the services or whatever it is that's happened to you. If you don't have any accumulated reserves or any assets or any savings, uh, what happens is you end up having to borrow, typically, to fund that, and that borrowing act puts you as a family below the kind of net break-even line. So effectively, what we've seen uh, around the world is that lower-income families without these buffers or reserves, in the event of a shock, they drop below the kind of net asset line, and once they're below that line, it becomes very, very difficult to ever get above it. And typically what happens is that these families are forced to borrow money to pay for the compensation for the shock, and that becomes a self-feeding environment of debt begetting more debt. What they end up doing is kind of living their lives below this kind of net break-even line. If you contrast that with a family that has some assets, has some savings put aside, the same thing happens, the shock event takes place and they will drop into and dip into their reserves and assets. But over time, and it's normally quite a short time, they get back to the same level they were at and then they progress on again. So the difference is if you don't have those reserves or those assets to buffer you against those shocks, you effectively can plunge yourself into a net negative environment where you can stay for the rest of your family unit's uh, lifetime. And often this is a legacy which is passed on to your children. So the concept of shocks is something I'd like people to really think about. And, and if you understand the concept of shocks and you acknowledge that it is far better to deal with those shocks out of reserves or savings rather than having to borrow to compensate for the impact of those shocks, you've kind of overcome the first hurdle uh, around why people should save. So savings is not when you put money aside every month so that you can pay for a deposit on a new car or you can buy a new mo mobile phone or a new item of fashion. That is simply staggering the time that you take to get to your consumption point. Now, something like education is often seen as consumption, but it's not. It's actually capacity building. So if you save over a period of time so that you can fund an education for your children or yourself, that is a capacity activity because you now have the ability to get employment, uh, earn an income, and you've created capacity. So education is not in the same category as saving for consumption. Saving is really about deferring the current consumption. It's about foregoing something, and it's about acknowledging that it's tough, and it is tough. Uh, all of us would much prefer to have the latest mobile phone, the latest fashion, fashion accessory, the newest motor car. Uh, but reality is that those are not assets uh, and that you are better off foregoing that consumption, putting money away and building up some capital that you can use for some real purpose. For example, living into retirement, paying for children's education, buying a home which is an, which is an asset. Here's the thing. A lot of people will say, I simply can't afford to save. I just don't have enough money. And I believe this is an attitudinal challenge. So there are two types of people. There are the people who will save of the income and spend what is left. And then there are people who will spend and save what is left. And I would argue that the second group are the ones who are the most challenged because there generally is nothing left at the end of the month to save with. And I think that is the danger uh, in that kind of approach, and that doesn't help you deal with the kind of shocks that I referred to a couple of moments ago.